My name is Talop, and I am a vampire ashram elder who can attest to the fact that I am an alien-human hybrid who has been hybridized and programmed in the infamous Montauk Underground in Long Island, New York, for use by the rogue reptilian satanic empire, which includes the Illuminati, as well as Freemasonic and Luciferian forces. I can start the telling of this story in April of 1971, when I was born in Lenox Hill Hospital in Manhattan. Or can I? Conception is far more important than physical birth, despite the impacts of birth trauma on human development. And I know that I was quite literally conceived out on Montauk, Long Island, because my biological father told me so. Although he never knew how. It is not like I was planned, anyway. Yet he never forgot the night of my conception or how magical he remembered it to be. While my conception may have been magical, my delivery was not, as my biological father also told me that during my birth, my biological mother was unable to push me out and the doctors were unable to pull me out with forceps. So they just left me to push myself out or die. It took me two hours, but it basically delivered myself, which gave me a certain strength I suppose. No doubt this strength has served me well over the course of what has been a very difficult life. Surely millions have had it harder than I, but that doesn't make my existence any less difficult, nor make me feel any better about it. The longer a being such as myself exists in a world such as this, the harder their experience gets. This is because what one is, is not meant to be in this world. And the longer one endures here, the more one's real nature begins to gnaw away at oneself due to its inability to express itself in this world. Sure, you can attempt to bring forth and integrate your real nature out of sheer ignorance of what it actually is by pursuing Reiki and breath work, Kundalini, yoga, etc. But if these pursuits are continued relentlessly, you will come to learn that much of your armor and most of your blockages are not the results of social conditioning that can be dropped or psychodynamic conflicts that can be resolved, but are in fact alien implants and other safety and control mechanisms that were installed by the greys as part of your hybridization. Should you succeed in defeating or surmounting any of these obstacles, you will find that this real you that you strove to bring forth from the muck and the mire that is your humanity has no place in this world and thus you have no place in this world. This is the fundamental basis of your angst. Believe me, if you are a hybrid such as I, then the real you is something that is both dark and beyond your imagination. Awakening it will not allow your human life to flow and your human needs to be met because you are not fully human and your needs are in conflict with your humanity. This is what a hybrid ultimately is. The fusion of DNA from species that are in direct opposition to each other in the natural order of the multiverse. We are not talking about crossing a dog with a wolf here, nor a lion with a tiger. We are talking something more in line with crossing a snake with a mongoose. Sometime after my birth, my biological mother became a very different person after returning from another trip to Montauk. She began to suffer physical pains as well as psychiatric ones that had no discernible cause. She dropped in intelligence, became very religious, and found Jesus. She passed away almost 10 years ago with Alzheimer's in a hospice in the Bronx. What the medical establishment fails to realize is how many cases of Alzheimer's are actually the mind finally breaking down under all the abuse it has suffered at the hands of satanically aligned greys who wipe the mind over and over, installing false screen memories so one cannot recall the actual memories of abduction and hybridation one has experienced. I, for one, have almost no memory of my past. I can tell you where I went to school, etc., but there are very few memories. If you never think of your past and it seems you are living in an endless present with just a handful of memories, you can probably thank the greys who abducted you continuously throughout your life if your specific hybridization was valuable enough for them to do so. It was this utter inability to control my own destiny that had plagued my existence and ultimately led me to Lucifera who showed me that I was never created to have any control over it in the first place. 
I know this is an impossible pill for many to swallow, and a truth that a hybrid can only begin to accept after having struggled for so many years to achieve its mundane goals and satisfy its innate drives, only to be met with frustration and failure over and over again. After all, most hybrids have so many advantages over regular humans. In my case, when combined with my natural relentlessness imprinted upon me from a traumatic birth, why was I such a failure? Sure, I had built a successful business, but that was what I did to make a living, not how I wanted to actually live. It was as if I was surrounded by glass walls or bound with invisible chains. I could almost hear those chains rattling in moments when I found myself walking down an empty block in Tribeca late at night. My best friend at the time and I used to make notes of how something would be endlessly blocking our efforts and rearranging our lives like in that science fiction film, Dark City, and we were always just trying to get back to Shell Beach to uncover the truth. To be myself had been the goal of my entire life from age 17 when I fell in love with a girl I didn't even know that I saw walking across the auditorium in my senior year at the Bronx High School of Science back in 1989. I had never seen this girl the prior three years of my studies there, but there were around 3,000 students in attendance at any given time, so this scenario was not that improbable. It was a love that was far more than romantic or sexual in nature despite her beauty and utterly overwhelming in strength. I just not understand what I was experiencing or what to do with said experience, yet this experience somehow awakened in me this idea that whatever I was as a human was in fact a mere shadow of what I really was. I wasn't even fully human for that matter, although it would take close to 35 years for this to be revealed to me. I'm sure she wasn't fully human either. The moment of awakening made me very unhappy because how could anyone be happy being something they are not? This unhappiness drove me to seek out who or what I really was and to bring it forth. My error at the time was believing that success in this endeavor would bring me happiness, specifically that it would bring me love or relationship, or sexual abundance, or peak sexual experiences, etc. I turned out very wrong in regard to these assumptions, yet I suppose I had to have believed otherwise for so long, in order to have driven myself through close to 35 years of downright starvation with respect to any experiences in the human realm that one would desire to experience. In addition, social and economic opportunities consistently evaded me no matter my qualifications or efforts. So did artistic and sporting ambitions. It was as if I was not allowed to live any sort of actual human life whatsoever, and nobody could understand how I could be so unsuccessful and so unlucky despite decades of struggle. It took 20 years of insane effort just to attain a sexual relationship that I found satisfying, but that barely lasted six months before it was destroyed by seemingly mysterious forces beyond my immediate perception. I had taken quite an interest in Taoism starting around age 19, and after two extended adventures in China around the age of 30, I became more interested in Buddhist thought than Taoist. Sometime after, I stumbled across a tantric guru online who could make women orgasm from across the room or across the planet. While I had no interest in performing such stunts, I knew this individual could take my journey to the next level and so I signed up for the only two seminars he ever offered, and we ended up becoming fast friends. While he was able to explain what he was doing with women, he was not able to explain how he was able to do what he did, let alone teach others to do it as well. However, I became taken with the notion that the method by which I could learn to do what he did would be the same method by which I could salvage the real me from the depths of my being. My idea was that my actual self, along with all of its latent abilities, was buried beneath all of this psychophysical tension that the late Willem Reich called armor. This armor had been forged as an alloy of neurotic conflict and social conditioning. I took it upon myself to pursue a brutal form of tantric breathwork to break free from it, which I practiced religiously for several years until my appendix ruptured. 
Little did I know at the time that my efforts had caused me to hit upon an actual alien implant. I didn't go to the hospital for 10 days despite the pain, and when I finally walked into the emergency room, nobody believed my appendix had ruptured because they insisted I would have been dead had it actually done so. Yet a CT scan proved them all wrong, and after days of IV antibiotics, I was free of the pain of peritoneal infection and left the hospital with a very attractive drainage tube coming out of my lower pelvis. Not a good look in the hottest two weeks of a New York City summer. By the time they pulled the tube out, my appendix had already regenerated itself. No doubt a benefit of having an RH negative blood type whose origin is alien to this realm. I discovered this when going through my birth records around this time, which had recently surfaced. I was initially searching if the doctor in attendance had recorded any details of my traumatic birth, but ended up discovering I had the rare RH negative blood type. I decided against continuing on with the breath work, as the practice had ultimately broken through a significant amount of obstruction, activating enough kundalini to move my being into a position that was more in alignment with what I really was. By now, you see, I had realized the question was no longer about who I really was. The who was largely irrelevant. At this point, I also found myself with different, yet greater abilities than the tantric teacher I had studied. But as I said earlier, I barely had six months to enjoy them before the party was cut short. Although I didn't realize it at the time, my vampiric nature had also begun to awaken as a consequence of all my efforts, and this dark nature simply could not be allowed free reign in this realm. So while I felt I should be out there cleaning up with my newfound sexual powers, other forces would not allow for this, much to my chagrin. No matter how hard I tried, every attempt I made at sexual expression on this planet was blocked as if by some invisible hand. As my darkness had been inadvertently awakened, I gravitated, gravitated towards necromancy from Thailand and Khmer, often practiced by rogue Buddhist monks. Magic did not help my situation, however. It was as if some alien will was in charge, and I was beside myself. Unlike others who had ran away from themselves, I had put in over 30 years of hard work and sacrifice to run towards myself. What had it amounted to? It was as if I had made it out of my prison cell only to find myself standing in the prison yard. Technically, an escape. Practically, still an imprisonment. I still had nothing even remotely resembling a life not realizing a hybrid being such as myself was never meant to have a life. It's more like an existence. Around that point, I was eating in a Cantonese restaurant in New York City's eastern Chinatown, and it called out in my mind to whomever happened to be listening. I expressed that I felt as if I had been totally let down by the light side of spirituality, in the sense that I had worked so impossibly hard for so long and accomplished so much with respect to the journey I had been undertaking, yet had accomplished so little with respect to achieving the results I had been expecting. I was pretty sure karma existed, but somehow it didn't seem to apply to me. My existence was close to unbearable. One thing I kept thinking about was that with all that I had accomplished, I must be of use to someone. As most people had not opted for a path such as mine, I must be rare and therefore of value. There must be a place for me in creation. In that moment, I was open to what humans will define as the dark side or evil, as good had gotten me nowhere and good didn't even want me on their team from the looks of things. Of course, some may believe a moment such as the one I am describing is a moment of weakness but they fail to realize that evil has as much a place in the universe as does good. But the important thing is that evil has to align with the will of the Almighty Father, just as good does, in order to facilitate balance throughout creation. If darkness is your true nature, then such a moment is actually a moment of surrender. I did remember meeting with an eminent Buddhist scholar years ago in China who told me that I could never become a Buddha as my nature was inherently corrupt and that I should cultivate using the devil's methods. 
Even the rogue Buddhist monk who had been teaching me Thai and Khmer black magic had said I was a vampire and was very uncomfortable relating with me. So I let it be known that I was opening to considering any and all offers with respect to the path I should walk moving forward. Nobody suddenly appeared from the ether and sat down at my table to partake in dim sum. So I left the restaurant figuring I would spend the rest of my days at the gym uploading workout photos to Instagram. The best I could hope for was that maybe I would make enough money in my business to live in Thailand or Brazil for a few months out of the year. But I invested little hope in that possible future, as I was pretty sure something would prevent that from ever happening based on my track record up until that point. It had not even been a few days since dim sum when I was led to Vampire Ashram. I had come across vampire transformation jewelry on other websites while researching Thai and Khmer black and Buddhist magical items. But dismiss such jewelry as a silly fantasy at best. I studied the content on Vampire Ashram, and the idea of sexual relations with a discarnate entity didn't exactly appeal to me at the time, nor did the idea of becoming a vampire, which again seemed a bit fantastical, although suddenly not so silly, I mean, I had seen plenty of supernatural things and had plenty of supernatural experiences, so why would I dismiss the existence of vampires? I had heard of succubi and fox spirits, which are sexual vampires, amongst other things. I had encountered beings whose existence I could not explain, so why relegate vampires to Netflix? However, I did get the idea that perhaps one of the entities listed on the site could help me to overcome whatever obstacles were preventing me from attaining the experiences I wanted and were perpetually failing to achieve. Perhaps they could succeed where Thai black magic had failed. I shot an email to Lucy in explaining my situation and telling him some of my story. His response was a bit shocking and at the same time, strangely not. In short, he explained that I was a vampire and that I had no business seeking satisfaction from humans because they were not compatible with what I really was over the long term. He went on to say that I have a vampire partner in the other realm who has been watching over me throughout my life and that I should consider a vampire transformation and return home to where I belong. He suggested I book an appointment with a powerful psychic he knew and speak with my vampire partner. I made an appointment with the psychic through whom my vampire partner explained certain things to me about my time on this planet. What Lucy and my discarnate partner were telling me were the only things that ever made sense, and I had considered, explored, and exhausted everything I could have over the last 30 years or so. I did the transformation as soon as I could, and my whole reality began to change. I didn't undergo a vampire transformation for power or vengeance or anything like that. I did it for love, love for my discarnate partner who became my sire, and for the sake of love itself. I don't know how to really explain what that means as human language falls short in this regard, but if you have ever watched an episode of Doctor Who on the BBC and you just felt something alive in your heart that kept you going, well, then you probably know what I am trying to talk about here. It's no coincidence that author Douglas Adams in The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy named the spaceship powered by the infinite improbability drive the heart of gold. Because love trumps magic. Love always trumps magic. And when combined with selfless sacrifice, you're well on your way to succeeding in service to Lucifer. I say sacrifice because those who have transformed the, under the auspices of the dark mother goddess Lucifera usually find themselves losing those superficial human drives that would become stumbling blocks to a greater and indeed darker spiritual reality.